It's Radio Ridley Radio with your host, Michael Ridley. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. One pound fish. Come on, baby. One. One. <laughs> very, very good. Very, very cheap. Today's date, November 19th. <laughs> 226 CST PM time. It's our three. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Very, very good and very, very cheap. Come on to my YouTube and listen to motherfucking R3. My name is Michael Ridley. Yeah, my style, it's so froggy. Froggy style, do it for a while. Shout out to my homies down in the city of Kyle. <laughs> Feels good, man. Taylor's back. Woo! Taylor's back. Taylor's back. Hey, guys, welcome to another episode of Radio Ridley Radio. I've had a bit of a development uh, happen. I've had a bit of a development happen over the uh, couple of weeks. Uh, this episode is titled Radio Relapse Radio. <sighs> Ready? Ooh. Would you hear mine? Mine was right in your ears, dude. Yours was crispy. Yeah, we're back. I mean, no, Ridley, don't. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I made a I made an executive decision. I spoke to the guys up at headquarters, and they were like, "You know what? I think he's ready. I think he's ready. We're gonna we're gonna roll out the uh, Ridley's drinking again patch. I think it's time for the Ridley's drinking uh, DLC to come out. Twenty dollars extra on top of the sixty nine ninety nine. You can get the uh, drunk Ridley skin. <laughs> you get the, it's an exclusive drop. It's such an ex. Here's the thing. I have. Uh, I want to make an announcement to my guys. Uh, to everybody who watches the show, everybody who knows, my problems with drinking have been absolved, and I've mastered. Uh, if a, <laughs> that was the first beer burp of the show, fifty-one episodes in, and that was the first beer burp from the Toadmeister himself, the Toadmeister <laughs> Toadmeister. We got. Uh, we unlocked Riff Juice. <laughs> I did. 50 episodes of this show without alcohol, and boy, is my brain tired. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fucking... I have mastered my uh, addiction. I have overcome my addiction of alcohol, and I have learned how to drink responsibly. This may or may not have had... Uh, uh, my return to alcohol may or may not have had anything to do with my appearance on the Drooling Banjos podcast <laughs> with Trey Pack and Mason Smith. And Maverick. And Maverick. But I was taking, um, I was filling in for Maverick that week, and Mason was shaming me for not being able to control my drinking. He said, you know why I'm better than you? Because I can drink as much as I want. <laughs> what did he say to me? He said, you know, I'm better than you because you're an alcoholic and I can still drink. And then he was like, guess who can still drink? And, and then his he made faces at, at me. Yeah, you and know, you were dying. You know, there's something. And, 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 and I took that personally. I took that very personally. And I felt so silly that I couldn't just have a beer. And then I, I really, sat down and sat, uh, really sat down and thought with myself. I was like, yo, can I? If I have one sip of alcohol, will my entire life fall apart? As, as so I've been telling myself. And um, I've had several drinks since I came back, and I'll tell you this. No, it won't. <laughs> no. My life has been uh, pretty good. Uh, my spirits are pretty high, and I know how to uh, – I think I've mastered the art of drinking alcohol and not doing it in excess. You know, I was able to tell myself no for two years, and there have been some times where I was really stressed out and I really wanted to have a drink – but now I'm noticing I'm not drinking out of stress. I'm drinking sheerly because I want to have a good time. It's not like a trauma response. It's not a stressor response. Oh, I need a drink. Oh, no. It's like, a, hey, man, we're recording a podcast. Uh, uh, second beer burp of the pod. Uh, and we're just, you know, I'm having a good time. I'm not drinking because I need it. I'm drinking it because I just want to have a little drink. Yeah. I'm not like uh I'm not finding myself going, Oh my god, oh my life, it's all, everything's so bad. I need alcohol to make me feel better. No, dude, it's not like that. That's how it used to be. And it used to make me feel so I felt so trapped. Cause there was times where it's like, Do I want to have a drink or am I stressed? And it's like, no, you weren't stressed. You just wanted to have a drink. Well, you don't identify with like the 
we know we're not gonna name names of our friends. But I don't. Like I don't. Alcoholics I, that like really need to be on twelve step and can't. Yeah, I can't don't. I control never themselves and stuff like that. I never identified with the twelve step people. I've had. I did that during. Um, I went in drug court, and drug court made you do AA meetings. And I, the people I saw there, I was just like, dude, I got a weed charge, and I have to go to AA meetings. Like, I never understood that. I never. They're just the AA people. It's like I've never been like a keep a flask in my jacket kind of guy. I've I've definitely been like a margarita at lunch break with the boys at work type guy. Yeah, but alcohol didn't ruin all your like relationships in life. Too. Well, it was for a little bit. Oh, okay. It was uh alcohol was well that's when I was using it. I was using it for the wrong reason. And I don't use it for that reason anymore and I haven't for 2 years. So like this is me experimenting with my body and trusting myself to be like, yo, I can have a beer and fucking have a good time and I can have two beers and I can have a good time and I can have a mixed drink and have a good time. And then when I'm like, oh, I'm a little kind of I'm, I'm teetering over with how comfortable I am with how with how drunk I am. Oh, let me chill. Let me reel it in. Let me go get a water and, and sit out for like 30, 40 minutes. Let me just chill for a second. I'm like learning how to gauge myself and I know when to cut myself off as opposed to in the beginning. I wasn't I didn't have that. I didn't have the, I'll just have this one beer or I'll just have this t- these two beers and then I'm like, let me chill. It was like, let's get as fucked up as possible and then I'm going to ruin everyone's evening and everybody's going to have to pay attention to me and take care of me. And like, that's kind of like shitty. Like, that's horrible. Like, to just be the one who's always getting too fucked up and everyone's worried about you. And then nobody wants to drink with you anymore, but you still have the urge to drink, so now you're just drinking alone is what, yeah. you know what I mean? So... Sounds like you got a good understanding of it. I feel like I have a good grasp on it, and I will verbally communicate if there's if it becomes a problem. Yeah. But as of right now, I am a 31 year old male. Uh, I've been on this earth for three decades. I'm happily married. I have a valid driver's license. I get good, consistent work uh, doing comedy. In Austin, I don't really see myself uh, in any position to ruin what fragile, beautiful life, the fragile and beautiful life that I've created for myself in this town. So I think. never had more to lose. I have so much to lose. Yeah. Yeah, I have so much to lose. There's nothing really like. I have, there are things at stake, you know, that if I, I, and I know that when I do this, it's like, if you're gonna have alcohol, remind yourself that, like, hey, buddy. With great power comes great responsibility, okay? I'm, I'm basically Toby right now, dude. And I have an internal Uncle Ben reminding me, like, hey, man, this is, this is very powerful stuff. You're listening to the R3 Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by DickLasers.com. If you guys want to support the podcast, head on over to DickLasers.com and get you one of these handy-dandy wiener laser pointers. I love this thing. It makes me laugh so much. It's up to five dinglings to choose from. We got Skinny Boy Jones. We got the Chode Meister. We've got Captain Hook. We've got POV, You're Facing Me, and your Standard Johnson. Everybody loves a good little party trick, and uh, this is my favorite way to uh, harass people in public privately and uh, just have a good old time. Head over to DickLasers.com and use promo code SWEATY for 10% off at checkout. Back to the show. You're listening to the R3 Podcast. (sighs) You thought you'd never see it. Another thing about beer, though, I get really bad acne when I drink beer. I get really bad. on the regular? Yeah, I'll fucking bubble up, dude, just... So I try not to drink beer. I'm more of kind of like a... Give me a crown and coke, and I'm gonna sip on that for like an hour and a half. Just one, one twelve ounce crown and coke. I'll sip that all night, and then I'll I'll drink my second one, and then I'm like, oh, all right, feel a little bit of a head change. Let me go get a water, and then and then once I start feeling the buzz, I immediately grab a water to kind of just start counteracting it because I've learned my body more, as opposed to like in the past, I would slam like a shit ton of alcohol and then be too fucking drunk to function. And then the whole night goes by, and I've just been the guy on the couch, just like starch on the couch, knocked out, or the guy throwing up in the backyard. It's like, bro, chill. You just gotta chill. Slow down. It's not a competition. It's not beer fest, dude. You remember beer <laughs> fest? Yeah. Das Boot. 
I remember, dude. I remember I hit the boot, bro. I chugged a beer out of Das Boot one time, and that bubble shit is real. You go too fast, that air bubble starts picking up and just fucking shoots you in the face, dude. That's so real, dude. I love. Like turn it or something. You have to turn the boot, yeah, and then it creates a vortex, and it goes like when they figure out the boot, the the, when they figure out the semantics of chugging Das Boot. That was such, dude. Beer Fest rules. I love that movie. They used to play it on a Comedy Central like all day, every day, and I'm just getting like brainwashed by fucking alcohol culture. Yeah, that's. It, there's a reason why people say drink responsibly. I think that name that uh, drink responsibly. Please drink responsibly will yeah. be the name of this one. I don't want it to be radio relapse radio. Please, please Ridley responsibly. Yeah, please Ridley responsibly. Or uh, yeah, uh, I don't. They always put that on uh, beer and stuff or ads. ads yeah. They put it in the ads and all that shit. I'm gonna tell you right now, bro. That is true. You got to drink responsibly, bro. You can't be going too hard. And always order an Uber. Always order. If you cannot, if you can't drive drunk, bro, get a fucking Uber. <laughs> but for the rest of us adults, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, stay off the road, buddy. But the, but the rest of us grown-ups, yeah, we'll be out there on 35, okay? Going 90. Fucking, if you can't drive drunk, brother, stay the fuck home. Just stay the fuck home. <laughs> You can't drive drunk. What do you hate your car? That's crazy. I love my car. You think I want to crash my car? I love my car. I'm never gonna crash my car. The fuck? I've never crashed my car drunk. I always crash my car sober drifting. <laughs> then I'm like, well, okay, at least I can't get a DUI. <laughs> my car is wrecked, but I'm like, eh, I can hobble it back to the house and put it back together. You know how many times I've done? I've hot, dude. I fucking. I've broken my car like three or four times and just <laughs> hobbled it back to the crib and just put it back together. I'm like, all right, sick. God, so many close oh, calls. You'll like this. We were in Corpus two yeah. nights ago. Yeah, what happened? Playing shows and right across the street from the venue um, where all the like concert goers were parked, there was a really steep uh, like driveway to get out of it. Ooh. And every single person just barreling <laughs> out of there, smashing <laughs> their bumper. Like it was, it was like almost a straight drop down. I hate that. Like a like a twenty five degree angle or some shit. I, I'm not good with angles, but it was it was bad. And then uh, and we just watched the bumpers pop out left and right. Like we were like, oh, watch, there's another one coming up. Another one's coming up. <laughs> lots of lots of people, lots of drunk people destroying their cars. Yeah, dude. Well, they, I don't understand why they, uh, there has to be some kind of, like, code for grade, like, a grading code for that. Like, the, the driveway, well, the parking lot entrances in here are gnarly as fuck. Yeah. They were gnarly in my truck. I remember scraping my truck to get in here. And now with the Miata, it's like, oh, God, I have to, like, go in at, I have to go in at like a 60 degree angle and then I have to cut it. I have to like snake my way up the hill. I can't go straight up or I'll yeah. just, I'll get stuck at the top and my car will teeter back and forth. And then you feel the tires catch and hit the ground and then you shoot off. <laughs> it's such a nightmare. Go on YouTube, type in stance cars getting stuck. Let's watch, let's watch some stance cars getting stuck. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> it's so brutal. Oh, yeah, watch stance car getting stuck. Stance car. Whoa. <laughs> what did you type? It like it like restarted. goofed up on you, right? Yeah. I went back and I was typing in the middle of it. Okay. Uh, Scroll down. Stance cars getting stuck compilations pretty good. Or yeah, right there. That Japanese one right there. This is what will happen. See that? See how the See how that back wheel was spinning? <laughs> That's what happens to me. I'll get like, oh wow, look at this thing. <laughs> Is it Matias when he gets money? You'll, yeah. you'll know. You'll know when Matias gets money. Look, bro, that's crazy. How do you even steer that? Yeah, you can't even drive it at that point, bro. It can only go straight. Koraina. Sugoi this. Oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what happens to me. See how that third wheel is up in the air? <laughs> Bro, that happens to me. Oh, this is exactly what I was talking about. Oh, no. Oh, God. 
That's a skyline. That's too. like the tiniest speed bump, too. See how that wheel is just burning out and you can't even. <clears throat> That'll happen to me here. If I don't hit it right, I'll get stuck like that. Yeah, this is a perfect example. See that? That's how the entrance is to the studio. <laughs> me trying to get in the studio. I have to do that. You have to go momentum. fast. You have to go fast. All right, cut it. They got an idea of what I mean. But yeah, that's kind of like a... Dude, I, I just think like everything should be designed for me. <laughs> Why do I have to drive a lame car? Why can't the roads be for me? I don't know. How do you guys... Do you guys like cars? I don't know if my fan base likes cars. But I hope you do. I love cars. They kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> I love cars so much. I have to like them now. You have to like them? Because you're always talking about them. I love cars, man. I'm like a big <laughs> car nerd. I love them. I've always loved cars. My first, uh, my neighbors, when I was a kid, they gave me my, uh, my neighbors, they had a Miata. And every day I'd walk to school and I'd stare at it. Like, I'd, you know, you'd leave your house to go walk to the bus stop. It would just be sitting out there. And I'd be like, man, that's a cool little car. I love that car. And they gave me my first bike. They were going to throw a bike out, and they gave me my first bike. And it was like a little starter bike. And then my parents ended up getting me like a red and black Huffy that went so hard. I had a red and black Huffy. That, dude, that was my shit, boy. I love that bike. But, uh. Yeah, the people who gave me my first bike, it's funny because the Miata was my first car. And I loved that thing, dude. I loved it. I would drive around all over Virginia to go hit mics. Oh, I loved that car. It was such a good car. And then I bought another one, and then I bought another one, and then I had three at one point, and I sold all three after I visited Austin for the first time. And then uh, I used the money to move here. I like 20 racks. Sold three Miatas, ended up with like 20 racks, and I moved here. Then I had the truck. I bought the truck before I moved. And then the truck got fucking totaled. You guys know about the truck. But then we went to Alabama and got the new one. And it's like, dude, my car is done. I put over like three grand in it in two months. It's done. It's like exactly the way I want it. I'm taking it to go get an alignment. I'm taking it to Kyle on Thursday to get an alignment. So by the time this episode comes out, I will have my car again. I've been grounded from my car for like eight days because it's just... I did some shit to it and I uh, put some parts on it. And now I cannot drive it. The tires are like rubbing the fenders. I need to go get it aligned before I can drive it anywhere. Are you, it's a nightmare. You gonna tow it? No, no, I'm gonna drive it to Kyle. I did. I did the alignment by hand. Well, by eye. I like. <laughs> I was like wrenching and then get up on from underneath the car and be like, "All right," because dude, when I first I did, I put tie rod ends and ball joints on it, and when I lowered it. When I took it off the jack stands to drive it, the car was literally doing this. <laughs> Dude, the alignment was so bad, my car was literally like, imagine pigeon towing your feet and then walking forward like that. That's how the car was driving. It was like, I was like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck's going on, dude? The fuck's going on, dude? Alignment's all fucked up, dude. A fucking alignment's all fucked up, dude. I can't fucking drive this thing, dude. <laughs> so I did the fucking this is called toe like the four this way the way your wheels are pointing in or out pigeon toe or like splayed out you want them to be like straight somewhat in so like when I put the when I did all those changes to the car the wheels were like this so when the car was driving it felt like it was army crawling <laughs> so I fucking straightened the wheels out by uh, like it was so bad that you could crawl under the uh, car adjust it then come out and see that the wheels were visibly straighter with the body so I just made them I did one of those and it is drivable but my driver front tire is rubbing against the fender cuz your boy's about that low life only if I hit like the slightest bump, you'll just hear. <laughs> I gave I gave your wife a ride home while you were out on tour. Taylor's been on tour. They've been doing rock star shit. But I gave Sarah a ride home, and I was just like, I'm sorry. It's it, it sounds horrible, but it really ain't doing much. It's the car sounds bad, but this ain't this isn't that serious. Don't be nervous. And I'm just hitting them. <laughs> you scaring my girl though? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about that at all. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, it's really not a big deal. It's 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 fine. <laughs> Jesus.
Jesus Christ. We saw a semi on the when we were on the road. We saw a semi that was carrying a house on the back of it. Yeah, and and three three of the tires on the right were all <sighs> rim. They had completely blown out. One was like falling off, <sighs> and we're like going slow. Super, yeah, it was sketchy, dude. Oof. It was like in tra- trapped in traffic too. Just Oof. Like, the house is like falling off. Mm-hmm. <sighs> shit, man. Um, while you were out on tour. Doing your Texas shit with your tour. I was going on my own little side quest as well. I got a booking for my boy John Carden. We went to a damn... We we did comedy. We did comedy for a frat. I did 20 minutes for... I got heckled by a frat for 20 minutes straight. It was a fucking nightmare. Oh, my God. Absolute <laughs> fucking nightmare. <laughs> like, there's one cool redeeming factor about it. <clears throat> I told them, I haven't had a beer in two years. I'm ready to relapse. Somebody hand me a beer. I had already had, you know, this is after that first sip. a week or two after. After that first sip. Maybe three weeks. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like three or four days after that first sip. And then somebody threw me a bush light, and I caught it. Like a fucking, (laughs) like a movie, dude. Open (laughs) open her up? Cracked it open. I start, I, I was like. Everybody chant relapse. I have 240 frat boys chanting relapse as I'm chugging a bush light on stage. And in that moment, the frog was freed. <laughs> the chains were broken. And I proceeded to bomb for another 15 minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I was doing while you were out having fun with your fucking band. <laughs> Just make you feel bad. You're chasing your dream. How dare you? <laughs> Sorry, we bombed it. We, we bombed it in... Uh... In Dallas. No, you did not. You <clears throat> well, guys... just because there wasn't a turnout. I mean, we, oh, did, we oh. did good, but but there, at one it's time, hard. at one time, the band Chernobyl that we were on tour with, they were on stage playing, and I had I came inside right after they started, and there was not a single person in there, <sighs> and they were all uh, they were all in the other room uh, getting like a drink and sitting down, and I walk in there and I go, "Hey, the fuck are you guys doing in here?" Whoa, they're playing, and everybody was like, "Oh yeah, they're playing." And then when I got on stage, they all had migrated again, right? And so I got on stage because that was just what you do between bands or whatever. Right, you. And sometimes you can't hear that the band started oh, and so yeah. from this the way this is set up. And so I got on stage, and I was, like, kind of doing a little bit of stand-up, you know, like, while they were getting ready. And I was, like, like we were about to start, and I was, like, if you're in the other room drink, <laughs> eating ruffles and drinking well whiskey, get your ass in here. Because <laughs> that's what they were doing. Because it was that's all the food they had was like sour cream and cheddar rum. <laughs> so if you're them. in there, if you're, hey, this next song is called sour cream and <laughs> cheddar ruffles and well whiskey. I literally was like, if you're eating ruffles and drinking well whiskey, you better get your ass in here. It's like a dad. When you guys ended the come and take it show, you were like. Thank you so much, Austin, Texas. Let's get a beer and hang out. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck is this guy? You guys destroyed. Like, you guys had a killer set, and then you just go, let's get drunk and hang out. And that, like, killed the whole set for me. I was like, you just bombed. You just ruined Damn. the whole thing. I fucking loved it. I was like, dude, my friend's so fucking badass. And you go, thank you, Austin, Texas. Let's get drunk and hang out. <laughs> Why did you say it like that, bro? Like, totally killed the whole vibe of the set for me. I was like, yes, dude, and I was fucking with you. And you were so high from the show that you were like, no, I didn't do that. But you literally ended your set. Thank you, Austin, Texas. Get drinking. Like, you fucking. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get drinking. I was like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Cheers, brother. Let's get drunk and hang out. I was like, dude, you sound like a South Park character, bro. <laughs> you sounded just like a South Park character. Oh, you were such a badass, though, dude. You were so gotta, gangster, gotta bro. Gotta humanize myself, I guess. It was it was awesome. I think you guys are an amazing band. <laughs> Hopefully, nobody else. Noticed. So many com. No, nobody else noticed. But it, but I'm I'm your fucking one of your best friends, bro. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I gotta, oh fuck! 
my sides. I'm like sweating from how hard that was making me laugh, dude. It was in I was like, hell yeah, all right. And that's exactly what we did. And Mason was there, and we took a shot together. And I go, hey, Mason. And he's like, what? Hi. And I hold up a shot, and he's like, no, you're not. You are not about to do that. He didn't know. And I yet. just was he didn't like, didn't know you he didn't know. Had. He didn't know. Yeah. And I just look at him, and I fucking demon time just demonizes. His jaw was on the floor. No, dude. Oh, no. Because everybody, you know, I had been building it up like it was impossible for me to have alcohol. So everybody was kind of like respectful, like, yo, respect. Ridley like acknowledged he had a problem. It was like, wait, <laughs> they don't know you like I know you. It's my wife. Wait. <laughs> it's not they don't love you like I love you. It's they don't know you like I know you. Wait. It was, um, what was I saying? But yeah, like uh, he he didn't Mason didn't know I had started drinking yet, and he was so excited. Once I calmed him down, I was like, "No, no, no, it's fine. I've been, I've been dabbling. We're fine." <laughs> but no, it was really bad. Like one time, me and my wife had like half a handle of Fireball. There is one thing I cannot have. <laughs> I think I figured it out. Like if I am going to be drinking, there's one thing that Michael Ridley, the frog, cannot ingest. The Cinnamon whiskey, dude. There's no, I cannot have no candy liquors. That's so funny. That's your. The that's fireball, your dude, is like my Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Heckle. <laughs> Mr. Jide. <laughs> Dr. Doc, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is a fireball for sure. It's like my, it's like my green goblin serum for sure. It just fucking become a demon, bro. You see that little fucking monster on the cover of the fireball that becomes me? Just when I become the fuck. I become the fireball demon. One time out in fireball, I uh, took me and Chelsea's cell phones and I wedged them in between the mattresses and took all my fucking clothes off, went straight down to my drawers, and got down to my drawers, sweaty as hell, just sweaty as ever, Shit house. drank like that much out of the fireball handle and just ran up and down my street knocking on people's doors, tugging on garage doors. Naked? In my underwear. Mm. And Chelsea's just running... I'm slippery as hell. I'm like the greased up deaf guy <laughs> from Family Guy. I'm all sweaty and greasy. Like and sh- Randy from Trailer Park. <coughs> I'm all sweaty and greasy. She can't even fucking get her grip on me. <laughs> and then she gets me back in the house and she's like, where's the cell phones? Where the fuck did you put the phones? I, I'm too drunk to remember that I wedged them in between the beds. So I hid both of our phones. And just for like four hours, I just terrorized her drunk as hell. I didn't do anything to her. I just kept trying to break out of the house. And she, she was alone, like, suppressing me in the house. So, yeah, we're never going to do that to her ever again. No more fireball. No more fireball. No more fireball. Jeez, that's... No, I don't know what it is, Normally, dude. it's, like, a badass thing. You're like, I can't have tequila anymore. No, it's fireball. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like a fucking demon juice, man. It's just That fucking... Pull up the fireball logo. <laughs> like, dude, I just become that guy on the front cover. <laughs> You'll never catch me. <laughs> just run around naked. Yeah, that's me. Just <laughs> I did I did it perfectly. I had <laughs> left hand yeah. up like this. <sighs> Cinnamon whiskey. 66 proof. Oof. Brutal. Brutal stuff. And you know they sell those little bullshit fireballs, too. At the 7-Eleven, you can get a fire, those little malt liquor fireballs at 7-Eleven. I would, I would drink a whole bandolier of those, dude. God, that was my thing. Just drink a bunch of those little fireballs. Never would, again. Nope, not doing that no more. You'll right. ne- Bro, my goal with alcohol is you'll never see me out there looking shitty. You'll never see me with throw up on my shirt. You'll never see me... Oh, give me a what? You're never going to fucking see me like that. I swear by you. That is the promise I make to you guys, viewers of R3. If you guys care about me, if you guys are, if anyone is concerned about this, I'm going to let you know right now, you will never see me. You're never going to fucking see that. You will never fucking, I swear on my life, I swear to Lord Jesus Christ, you'll never fucking, you're never going to see that. I'm too drunk, Goku. You'll never see that from me. You will never see me that fucking drunk. However, you will see me. <laughs> you will see. <laughs> yeah. I had a couple of beers, Goku. You fucking. <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> uh, one crown and coke, please. <laughs> King Kai just at the bar getting drunk. 
I can't have fireball, Goku. You don't want to see what happens to me if I have a couple of fireball shots, Goku. Have you ever had a um have you ever had a cinnamon toast crunch shot? I don't think so. It's fireball and uh what is that creamy whiskey stuff, Eric? Bailey's or something? Oh no, it's fireball and horchata. Whoa. And it tastes just like cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> It does. It tastes just like cinema tokra. It's crazy what they can do with alcohol, but we can't cure cancer. <laughs> like, like, this one tastes like a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. What about my son's leukemia? Eh, Oreos? <laughs> Buckshots. <laughs> Buckshots on 6th Street. They went out of business for a little bit, but they reopened next to Velveeta Room on 6th. Bro, you can get like these crazy ass shots there, the, like candy and ice cream. It's like, that's slippery. That's sketch. Yeah. The sweet stuff, man, that stuff is cuz I love sweets. I got a little bit of a sweet tooth. <laughs> I love sweets. Third beer burp. I love sweets. I really do. But then you start mixing it with the liquor and I can't control myself. <laughs> I really can't. There's just something about the flavor of candy and the demons of alcohol spirits. The spirits get a hold of me <laughs> and I just can't control myself. <laughs> I just can't. I just go off the deep end every time. If there's like some kind of sweet tastiness to it, I just go crazy. It has to be a little bitter. It has to be some kind of like physical like, all right. Mm. You know, like a beer. Beer, I like the taste of beer, but it has a bitterness to it that makes me not want to drink it fast. If it's so sweet and tasty, I'll just click, 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 click. I really like her. I think you should mode. name that character. Fucking. I really like her. What? Debra? <laughs> Deborah the drunk? <laughs> Deborah the drunk. I just can't control it. And I just can't control myself, you know? You just give me some, if you give me some sweet liquor, goodness graciousness, I just, whoops, I just, there you go. My skirt flies up. Everyone sees my cooter lips. <laughs> the smell of the room changes instantaneously. <laughs> God, I remember one time I, I remember one time I had three or four Jaeger bombs. I showed everyone I could smoke a cigarette with my pussy. Just, <laughs> I was blowing smoke rings with my pussy. <laughs> and they kicked me out. They had to kick me out. They said, ma'am, this is a golden corral. There are children here. And I said, what do you know? And then I threw up all over myself, and the cops got called. <laughs> Jeremiah had to fucking bail my ass out. Jeremiah. I still owe money. Sweet little Jeremiah, I love my nephew, but Jesus Christ. I'm just, I'm just putting my family through so much stuff. You know, I just put, put, put my goddamn family through all, these, all this trouble, all this all this. All this, all these trials and tribulations because I can't stop with the, you know, the stimulation, the stimulants. Good golly gosh. The fuck am I doing? You know, I'm 47 years old. <laughs> I'm fucking 47 years old. I live in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay, we don't come from money. That's apparent. We don't come from money. Okay. <laughs> Life ain't just... <laughs> Life ain't just fucking scratcher tickets and, and fuzzy navels, okay? Fucking Friday night. What am I doing? Price is right. Reruns. Price is right, reruns, and I'm fucking... I'm slamming beer bongs of Smirnoff ice. Just loading up a beer bong. Three or four Smirnoffs in there. My stomach is burning. Doctor says I have to stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor says I have to stop drinking. Something about I got worms or something. My asshole is always burning. <laughs> Just me and the dog, rubbing our assholes on the carpet. <laughs> one in the morning, Saturday. Saturday morning. It's Saturday now. It's one in the morning on a Friday night. Me and the dog are just scratching our assholes on the carpet. I called the doctor. I said, what's wrong with me? He said, you got, Deborah, you've got worms. And I said, worms? I haven't had any candy today. <laughs> like trolley? You mean like the trolley gummy worms? He said, no, like you got a parasite. A para what? Bright crawlers. You're telling me I got bright crawlers up my ass? <laughs> you telling me I got I got creepy crawlers in my anus? Is that what you're trying to say? Thank God I got Medicaid. Just me and the dog scooting around the Me and the dog the little little poop scooping boogie over here. Just a couple of couple of <laughs> the fuck is this show become, man? <laughs> I'm so grateful. Woo! Best show ever. It is the best show ever. Woo! 
Nobody has more fun than I us know, on, it's a, so on a easy. Tuesday, it's Wednesday, fucking or Thursday. Tuesday. It's literally Tuesday. 3 p.m. on a Tuesday, and I'm drinking a Miller Lite. I remember I used to be in a body. I used I was the parts manager of a body shop. They went out of business. I was a parts manager of a body shop for four years, and I was like, dude, this sucks ass. I was like losing my hair. Ugh. My hair's growing back. It was stress. I was losing my hair to stress, and my hair's growing back. I might shave my fucking head. And just stimulate my scalp and keep keep that growth coming back. I'm I'm super excited about that. There is something about uh there is something about alcohol that helps with the podcast. Your boy can yap a lot better. <laughs> there's no dead air. I don't think there's gonna be any more dead air on this show. Yapatron your boy, 5, dude, the Yapatron five thousand. Yeah. Just load it up with twelve <laughs> ounces of Miller Light, a fine Pilsner beer. And the frog can yap. Uh Michael Secret stuff. Uh <laughs> Don't do that. You freaked me out. That scared the fuck out of me. What was that? Was that a voice filter? I was trying to find the voices so you could do the, 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 oh, the Yapatron 5000. Oh, the deep one? The Yapatron 5000. <laughs> one 12, one 12 ounce Miller Lite beer allows the frog to yap for up to two hours. Two hours. <laughs> Sick. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Do you guys like the voice filters? Comment down below. You like? like the voice filters. All right, I hate that one. Don't f- stop. <laughs> okay. You sabotaging this? No. I swear to God, Taylor. I'm done. There's one thing about the alcohol. I do get more violent. <laughs> I do get more friggin' violent, dude. I might have to open up a can of whoop ass. <laughs> whoop ass. I would never be fucking up. I would never be intimidated by a gay southern dude. I swear to God, I'll hop over there and kiss you on the lips. Gay Southern dude, I beat the shit out of a gay Southern dude. Not because he's gay, but if he was threatening me. What was that? Fuck you, say to me, buddy. <laughs> I'll just be like, excuse me. Just the kind of guy that you could do with one of these. You just palm his forehead, and he's like, mew, 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 mew. <laughs> the fucking. <laughs> 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 I wish I had arms to do that, but I have the length of arms that that would somebody would do that to me. I would be like the guy going, hey, why are you to hey? <laughs> I'd be that guy. But yeah, let me know if you guys are liking the Let me know if you guys are liking the beer episodes. I don't think it's going to be a habit. I don't think I, I don't think I'm uh I don't think I'm going to rely on alcohol to produce this show. That's not really a uh, it's not really feasible. We're only 50 episodes in. It's going to be like, "Welcome to episode 1004." And my brain is like in a jar. <laughs> it's just my brain in a jar hooked up to a voice box computer thing. <laughs> it's just fucking dead. <laughs> I fucking killed myself. Oh man, the Yapatron five thousand. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Whew. You got shows to plug? No, I ain't got shit going on. Well, I do. I just let's see. It comes out on Friday. I'll be at Vulcan. Uh, got two. St- you'll see me. You can see me twice uh, this Saturday at Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas. Uh, Best of Vulcan at 8 p.m. and the Toxic, Mascul- Toxic Masculinity Show at 10 p.m. You can see me at 8 and 10 p.m. in Austin, Texas at the Vulcan Gas Company on 6th Street. Come on down. Come hang out with your boy. If you guys, if there are any local listeners um, that aren't already in the comedy scene and want to see your boy live, uh, come see me at the Vulcan Gas Company. 8 p.m., 10 p.m., two shows. Two opportunities to come see me. I'll probably do the same set twice, so you can go to one if you want. Should we talk about December 1st or not? December 1st. Oh, is that confirmed? Yep. Okay, so that is confirmed? Yes. Uh, December 1st, I'm going to be in uh, Dallas, Texas with Rick Diaz, a golden ticket winner who famously lost against Hans Kim in the Ultimate Showdown that was uh, featured on the uh, uh, New Year's uh, First Arena show or whatever. You guys saw that. You guys know about the Hans Kim and Rick Diaz uh, arc. We got an episode with them. Yep, there's an episode with Rick Diaz. That's a good one, too, if you guys want to go over there and check that out. Uh Sheesh, Louise. December 1st, Hyena, 7 p.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did put some videos in the folder. Can we watch some videos while I recoup? I'm a little... I'm going to drink some water and breathe for a second. Ooh. Mm-mm-mm. I put some funny videos in there, I think. Uh, What is that? Let's click the one in the middle. I forgot what that is. Top middle. I know somebody is evil. And let me be clear before I begin, I don't believe that anybody is either wholly good or wholly bad. As Oscar Wilde once quipped, every sinner has a future, but every saint also has a past. 
And yet, this is a theory about good versus evil that goes back to the philosopher Hegel, who once made the argument that evil is simply the good which believes itself to be absolutely good. And essentially what he meant is twofold. One, anybody who believes that they are beyond reproach, that they are by definition always right and virtuous, is thereby at risk of becoming evil themselves. Like, historically, it's always those who claim to be fighting for the absolute good who end up committing acts of evil. Vice versa, you could also make the argument, as Nietzsche once did, that once you fight monsters, you have to be careful that you don't become a monster yourself, which to say, perhaps it is our very desire to do good that tempts us into acts of evil. However, I would like to side here with Hayao Miyazaki, who once said, perhaps the idea of good versus evil is itself a kind of evil. Maybe the world isn't about the good guys versus the bad guys. Maybe it's more complex than that. And so a good person practices introspection and self-reflection. A bad person, perhaps even an evil person, or at least someone capable of committing evil, believes that they are wholly and absolutely good and virtuous. That's evil. Here's a simple yep. sign that somebody is evil. And that's what I remember why I saved this. Um, I used to think that I was better than people because I, I like felt like I was above people because of this, you know? I thought like, oh, just because I don't uh just because I don't partake in alcohol that I'm a uh, I'm a better person than you or like and then I'm like, yo, what the hell am I doing? Cuz like in that in that sense, I bec I myself was like kind of being a dickhead in that sense. Like thinking that I'm better than people because I have this virtuous view of using alcohol and I thought anybody and people I thought I would look down on you if you used alcohol at some point during my sobriety. I'd be like, "Oh, you can't fucking just raw dog life all the time." What are you weak? What are you? And now I find myself being like, well, what if I just want to have fun? What if, what if ev not everyone is like me? You know what I mean? What if everyone not if, what if, what if some people are just so undamaged that they can just use alcohol and have fun? You know what I mean? And what if in the last two years, maybe I've healed enough as a person to be able to partake because I am the happiest and the healthiest I've ever been in my life. So maybe there is something wrong with me. You know what I mean? Maybe there was. Maybe there was something wrong about feeling morally superior, morally superior. <clears throat> fourth beer burp of the pod. So, like, yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at. It's like <clears throat> I won't perfect. Nobody else is perfect. You know what I mean? Stop. <sighs> Don't hold yourself higher just because you, because you, you know what I mean. You see what I'm saying? I kind of was being like kind of a smug dickhead about it. I think, but I, I was kind of being smug about my sobriety. Like, I, I didn't think, like that. I don't think that's I don't think that's unique to you though, because I think that's kind of how everyone feels when they stop drinking. I you know I get that way too. Like, if I stop drinking for like a month, I don't. It's subconscious, kind of, you mm -hmm. know. But I, I definitely am like. It's not my. Yeah. Fo it's not like my first instinctual thought, but I'm I not found hang my. Out with you guys drinking, I have things to do. Yeah, like yeah. no, no, dude, it's. Kind of a tight ass, bro. You're kind of just being a tight ass. Well, you, I think you're a little bit of a tight ass if you think that way. Me? No, I'm saying in general. Like the people. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying like people are, you, it's like tight ass. And living like a tight ass is not cool. Like I think that's, that's there's, it's, there's a lameness to that. Being like I'm better than you or, or not directly saying it, but you're thinking it. You kind of like, oh, look at you. Your life is so, your life is falling apart. You can't keep keep that beer out of your mouth or whatever but it's like no nah, dude it's just maybe they can handle their shit better than you and the idea of you having a beer is so scary that you have to have that thought you know what i mean maybe it'll reinforce that positive view of yourself because you're like well i couldn't be seen i wouldn't be caught dead drinking a miller light you know what i mean like <laughs> fucking like that's i'll say like, who the fuck am i oh <laughs> A Tito's and soda. <laughs> Are you fucking plebeian? Like, Are you fucking <laughs> monopoly guy energy? Yeah, monopoly guy energy. Just farting in a cup and sniffing it. <laughs> just sniffing my own farts like South Park. Just <laughs> oh, yes, I don't have to drink alcohol. I have ascended past that. <laughs> <laughs> Like, fuck, dude. Who, what? Girl, just have a beer. Shut up. Have drink and be merry, as the Lord said. Let's watch that top right right there. <coughs> I feel like that's a cool <laughs> Turn the music off. Look at this. 
So that is like a that's like a plastic goose that somebody put a uh, somebody put an RC boat, the guts of an RC boat inside of a plastic goose. Dude. <laughs> and one of the top comments was like, "I thought it was a normal goose hyper shitting to propel itself." <laughs> that's what it looks like. Dude. It looks real as fuck. It freaked me out. I was like scrolling at like three in the morning, and I saw this, and I was like, "Yo, that goose moving fast as hell. What the hell?" That's some trippy ass shit. Look at him ski, <laughs> little fucking. That's sick as fuck, dude. I want one of those. And then what is uh? Oh yeah, this is funny as hell. Turn it up. When the Walt Disney World pianist notices your red hot chili pepper shirt. He <laughs> starts playing under the bridge. <laughs> then he cuts back to the fucking show tunes music. So I went and I commented. I said, uh, bro, all Disney employees are in a get out situation, and you just hit them with the camera flash with that Red Hot Chili Peppers t-shirt. It's <laughs> so like for a brief moment, he saw that Red Hot Chili Peppers t-shirt and remembered that guy used to do heroin under a bridge and listen to the Chili Peppers. And then he was like, wait, we're at work. Da, 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 da. He had to cut back to fucking, he had to cut back to who he was. <laughs> This next video features Soldier Boy. Uh, turn it up. I would take your ass out. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You gotta have a headset. You understand? You gotta have a headset because you gotta talk shit. So just in case I don't feel like talking shit, I'm too tired to talk, I would type your ass and just be like, stupid ass bitch, or something like that. You know <laughs> Soldier Boy, tell him. Here's my game attack. I'm just gonna show y'all the best I did, man. Sometimes I'll be on, on Xbox Live, and they'll be like, oh my God, this is a real Soulja Boy, they don't believe me. I got my Xbox camera, got that Xbox camera, I, I get right here, I look at it and I say, pow, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Soulja Boy fan, if you're a Soulja Boy hater, I don't give a fuck who you is. I want, I had this one person, she's like, oh my god, I'm your number one fan! Pow, headshot! <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, dog! With this joystick, I will take your ass out. Dude, could you imagine playing fucking Halo Reach? You just hear, yeah, bitch, yeah! Fucking dude. To play to play Halo with fucking Soldier Boy would be peak. In his prime. Soldier Boy in his prime before he was Drake. Before he went crazy. I just feel like Soldier Boy has kind of gone off the deep end. You see that youthful glow to his face in that video? Bro, Soldier Boy has like Soldier Boy is starting to look like Lil Boozy in the face a little bit. Like something happened to SB, bro. Something happened to Soldier Boy, bro. I don't know what happened to Soldier Boy. I remember, bro. I I love Soldier Boy. I got me some bathing apes. Bro, he just, he's got those crackhead cheekbones all of a sudden. It's the cheekbones, bro. They make you look like a fucking fiend, bro. Bro looks fucked up. <laughs> and why are y'all so rich? You got these shitty ass tattoos. Why do you, y'all get money and your tattoos are garbo. Bro, what the fuck? Is that a Gucci emblem on his, on his forehead? It's like a Wu Tang thing or something. No, that's not Wu Tang. That's just a shitty ass Gucci emblem. Like, bro, who the fuck is doing these guys' tattoos? My tattoos aren't that good, but like, I'm also a broke ass motherfucker. I'm broke as hell. There's no excuse. Y'all should be getting like the best tattoos. I'm not here to hate on Soldier Boy. I'm here to say like I'm genuinely concerned about Soldier Boy, and he's kind of like. He's got that same look. Some videos I see of Soldier Boy, he's got the same look in his eyes as like Orlando Brown. Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav, Orlando Brown, uh, Boozy Badass, Soldier Boy. They all kind of have like that like unhinged kind of look behind Fame their eyes. did something to me. Somebody, like something. You saw something at one of them P. Diddy parties or something, <laughs> bro. You saw, you saw what they did to Meek Mill in person, and that should just go into a Diddy party change as a man. Baby oil, as far as the eye could see. They locked the doors from the outside. We couldn't leave. <laughs> Sean had an insatiable desire for man's butt. And he wouldn't let us leave until he had his fill of man's butt. So he'd lubricate the floor so he couldn't run away. <laughs> In there, running in place like Scooby-Doo. Couldn't get a lick of traction. I seen things. Things a man should never see. (laughs) 
But he's like on the view. <laughs> he cuts back and he's like on the view. Whoopi Goldberg's asking him a question. Like, oh. Terrifying. Soldier Boy, you're up in 10. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> Just somebody with a headset. Uh, Mr. Soldier Boy, you're up in 10. Oh, all right, bet. Scooby Doo running. Just fucking. <laughs> just, what is Diddy? <laughs> he pulls off his mask and it's still Diddy. Diddy again. <laughs> and I would have wait. And I would have got away with it too. And I would have shut the studio down too if it was for damn kids. I'm shutting down the studio. Terrifying, bro. And Chappelle was like kind of trying to like slightly nudge that he was on some freaky shit. He was trying to like kind of like slightly like insinuate like Diddy is kind of weird and controlling. You would have been a menace at a Diddy party, dude. What me? Yeah. I'd have been eating the hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, you would have been. I would have just been oh, eating shit. the food. I'd be like, oh shit! <laughs> Why is Justin Bieber naked? <laughs> oh, oh, they taking him in the room. Oh, they they doing stuff to his booty hole. Why is Usher's dick out? Usher, put your dick away. Is that herpes? Let it burn, <laughs> let it burn, let it burn. You, Why is Usher's dick out, dude? What the you, hell? I'm just at the Diddy party. with I'm the only person drinking beer at the Diddy party. Like, yo, this is mad gay, dude. You're running to get another croissant sandwich from, yeah. from the grocery store, and you're like, Excuse yo, me. I got to get back. Uh, they're, they're, they're fucking Meek Mill in room B. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing pin the tail on the donkey. <laughs> I'm, like, eating the cake. Emergency. <laughs> oh. But yeah, nah, dude. I enough about ditty parties and stuff. I am a see. Look, I made a beer last an hour. That's crazy. Damn near. Ugh. Sixth burp, I think. A lot of burps, man. I gotta get that under control. But yeah, I gotta. Um, I don't know. I'm just happy to be drinking again, dude. That that that, that drank stuff. I love that. I love the warm, the warm embrace. The warm embrace of the yak. Oh. The warm embrace. I missed it, dude. I missed it. But we do have to be very careful. We gotta be careful. We can't fall back into old ways. And I'm I'm very uh, I'm very conscious of that. I'm very conscious. Very cautious and conscious of that. Bro, the first sip I had, we we were at Mitzi's bar. It's the bar connected to Mothership. I have fucking the first sip. My wife hands me a drink. I always do this bit with my wife. This is how it happened. I do this bit with my wife. I was like, let me get that. She hands me her drink, and I always go like this, and I go, ha ha, just kidding. And I just, I've done that for like three months now to where I was like, I looked at her. I was like, can I? And she's, my wife's drunk. She's just like, and I go, and then her vibe immediately changes, and she just like, dude, she went home, she cried. She was like, I don't want you to be that guy again. And, and I'm like, yeah, my drinking was really bad. My drinking was bad, and it was like, it was damaging to all my friendships and my relationships. And my wife got the, the brunt of it. And that's why I mean, um, that's what I mean when I say you're never gonna see me like all fucked up and making a fool of myself because. That's the person that pr I almost, bro. My my girl almost left me. That's how bad it got, and I was so self destructive with my drinking because I had not, I just felt like I had nothing to live for, and my gratitude was all fucked up, and I was in, like, I had gotten used to everything, and was like, I got to used to her, and I was taking her for granted and stuff like that. It's just not good, bro. You don't ever let don't ever let any substance or anything that you could possibly get addicted to don't ever let that stuff get in the way of your relationships your responsibilities and um <clears throat> your integrity as a person and i think you're fine i think you're good as long as you uh if you know how to self-regulate and if you're real with yourself you can't do something like I did. You can't take two years off of alcohol. Because I thought I was like, all right, I'm going to be off alcohol for the rest of my life or until I feel like I'm ready for it. That's how I felt. And I took that one sip, and then I tried um, 
you know, over the course of the last few weeks, I've had like one or two drinks and I've been out with my wife. We had one or two drinks together and shit's going good. I am not going to, uh, I'm noticing, I'm not noticing like any change in my brain chemistry because I do stay hydrated and I'm exercising and I, I move a lot. I stay moving. I have a goal. I stay working. We're good. Some of the greatest philosophers of our time, they drink, you know, and, uh, <laughs> I believe myself to be one of them. You have more friends to hold you accountable to. And I, yeah, I have more friends to hold myself accountable. I wasn't. I'm I was, not going to let you be a drunk return. I'm not going to let me be a drunk return. <laughs> Do you hear about what happened to Ridley? Yeah, he's like a fucking drunk retard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's just under the bridge. Go- <laughs> he's just under the bridge quoting the Flintstones. <laughs> Shit house. Just fucking. Yes, Barney. I'm shit housed again, Barney. <laughs> Barney, I fell off the deep end, Barney. Jeez, Fred. <laughs> just like, you really fucked up, huh, Fred? <laughs> Barney, I'm <laughs> he just yeah. He's just quoting Flintstones now. He's just like doing Flintstones riffs under the bridge, huh? You're weird. <laughs> I'm just butt ass naked doing <laughs> Flintstones riffs. <laughs> Barney, I'm joking. I'm totally joking it. And by it, I mean my penis. <laughs> okay, Fred. <laughs> Barney, I'm joking it. <laughs> Barney, I'm going to jail <laughs> for public indecency, Barney. Barney! <laughs> Tell Mr. Slate I won't be in. <laughs> <laughs> it really has just been like getting shit housed under the bridge doing Flintstone ribs. <laughs> Barney! This <laughs> fucking butt ass naked fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Barney, put your dick in my ass, Barney. Yabba dabba do <laughs> type shit. Have you seen Ridley? He's like dressed as a caveman doing Flintstone riffs, drunk under the bridge. Yeah, he doesn't. His wife left him. Barney, my wife left me. It's kind of like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> These people. They're sneaking in the bedrock. <laughs> They're sneaking in the bedrock, Barney. They're not bringing their best. <laughs> Fucking, what's his name? Fred Flintstone. Flintstone 2024. They're sneaking in the bedrock. is crazy. <laughs> They're not bringing their best. Barney. <laughs> Barney tells me all the time he's it's so hard to mix those two. I can't I can barely do Barney from Barney tells me all the time. I can barely do Fred Flintstone. God, is that public domain? Uh, is is the Flint can we just watch the Flintstones on we'll watch it on Patreon? Here we watch, yeah. We'll we'll dial in we're gonna, the we're gonna, we're gonna dial oh yeah, I'm gonna cr- I'm gonna have another beer. I'm gonna dial in the Fred Flintstone <laughs> impression. Barney puts <laughs> Barney put a rock up my ass. Barney, put, he's putting. A, what's his name? Wilma. His yeah. wife's name? Betty Wilma. And Wilma. Betty and Wilma. Yeah. Betty was bad as fuck. Yeah. I know that shit smelled crazy though. Barney, hot wife, very dumb. <laughs> Barney, how does a how does a little short dick like you get a woman like that, Barney? Trump, <laughs> Trump Flintstone. I can't wait to Trump. Watch Trump could be a fucking Flintstones character, easily. Just Trump is Trump in one of those like Flintstone outfits. Took over the whole engraving factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fucking the teleprompter. The teleprompter's like pissed. It's like a it's like a T Rex or something. I like how in the Flintstones every piece of technology was just an enslaved dinosaur. Or like an enslaved animal. Like the bird in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, meh. It's a living. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> What a nightmare. Mm-mm-mm. Well, guys, comment down below if you're uh comment down below if you're proud of me or if you're disappointed. Let me know how you feel. <laughs> I apologize to absolutely nobody. To quote Tony quoting uh Conor McGregor. Oh man. Patreon.com slash radio ridley radio. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's how I want to start the Patreon. We'll do a 
I want to, uh, we'll listen to the King of the Hill theme song and I want to crack the beer at the same time as the theme song does. Mm-mm-mm. Well, it's been another episode of Radio Ridley Radio. Let me guys, uh, let me know what you guys think of me making my grandiose return to using alcohol. Let me know if you enjoyed this one. Let me know if uh, you thought I was a little more loose, a lot more chill. Not as sweaty. I'm not sweating my ass off. I was Interesting. Ex- I was exerting myself a bit, too. I usually would be sweating my ass off at this point, but I was just like, again, heart rate's low. Your boy can just let the riffs flow. We tried to poke a few ideas. I had a lot of fun with, what was the one we did earlier? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Deborah. I thought Deborah was really funny. Um, guys, uh, again, submit the riff. Oh, hold on. I think I have a submit the riff we can knock out before I leave. I, I got it. You want it? Oh, you got it? Oh, I forgot to tell you. You know, uh, one of our patrons, Austin, my friend Austin, he's a $20 sub um, to our Patreon. And he visited Austin, and uh, we took, dude, we took him through. We showed him everything, bro. Nice. Yeah, he got to hang out at the mothership. He got to see me at Black Rabbit. It was an awesome time. So any of the $20 subs, if you guys are watching the freebie right now, bro, hit me up. Feel free. We'll hang out. $20 a month, I'll hang out with you. <laughs> but no, that was like a childhood friend of mine, and he was visiting Austin. All right. Oh, we yeah. You have one from... From Austin. From Austin, yeah. A tech bro poorly pretending to be a blue-collar redneck to impress his girlfriend's religious parents. That's a pretty solid one. That's a solid riff. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, hello, I, um, <laughs> yes, I am a, I work with my hands, I'm a, <laughs> yes, I believe this is called an impact wrench, I bring this with me everywhere I go. Do you need me to ugga dugga anything? Do you need me to ugga dugga something? Wow, um, yes, th- I believe this is called, I believe this is called a pickle fork. Yes, I use it to eat with... <laughs> Yes, my I put uh, ball joints on my computer. <laughs> oh, it turns out uh, your light switch fixtures are very loose. Let me grab the uh, <laughs> let me grab the screwdriver that I always keep in my front pocket because I'm a blue collar man. Hello. <laughs> yes, I moisturize my hands. That's why they're so soft. He shakes your hand like this. <laughs> So, so what your father used to do? Uh, he was a, uh, he worked in the mines. The Bitcoin, mi- uh, the, the coal mines. He mined bit, uh, coal. Bit-coal. He used to mine bit coal, uh, uh, coal mining. He was a miner of, <laughs> he was a miner of bit, uh, coal. <laughs> He's like catching himself. Yeah. He's catching. So, what do you think about uh, what do you think about all this Trump Elon stuff? I like Elon. <laughs> I like him a lot. I use uh, the cyber truck is good for. <laughs> I pull up to the job site in my cyber truck. Hmm. <laughs> it's like steamed hams, <laughs> steamed hams, but it's a fucking. Oh well. Well, I'm glad we got to sneak in a submit the riff. Guys, yeah. again, you can uh, send a send a you could submit the riff at radio ridley radio at gmail.com and we'll do a little uh, riff to you see who uh, see who uh, tune in to see if your riff was submitted once we get a bunch of them. But right now we're just getting about one or two riffs emailed to us. But submit the riff at radio ridley radio at gmail.com. Please put submit the riff in the uh, in the subject line that would really help us keep the emails organized again this has been another episode of r3 head over to the patreon to see the bonus hour that's attached to this episode where i'll be drinking another beer thank you guys so much support the frog nash uh support sweat legion i love you bye-bye it's radio ridley radio with your host michael ridley